right, good morning, Dallas First. Stand and join us as we worship and praise the living God this morning.
pursue him. His presence is here. God, you are so good. Don't be a spectator. Come on, everybody. God, you are so good. You are amazing, Lord. We thank you for who you are. God, we are so grateful for your presence, God. Lord, we invite you in this place. God, I pray that you would have your way here, God, that you would just pour out your spirit in this service right now, God. I pray that you would move in this place, that you would move in our lives. God, we open ourselves up to you. God, we open ourselves up to you today. Lord, we are, we are here in your presence. Come on, 30 more seconds. Come on, dive in. 30 more seconds. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to do communion in a second, but i got to ask this before we get any further. Some people have come to me asking me to pray for a few things. So Miss Charlotte asked us to pray for her son and his health. So we're going to do that, aren't we, church? Amen? Matthew John, little boy, Matthew John, is in the hospital. He's been there since Wednesday. In fact, I think he was in ICU. We need to pray that God opens his lungs up. Amen? That family's tired. We're going to pray for that together. But you know, you came here with needs, and our God hears your needs. Our God is ever-present, and our God cares so much about you. We want to take a moment to, to meet those needs, to pray, to pray for those needs and lift them up. So my question for you today, how many of you guys need God to move right now? Who needs God to move? Raise it up with pride. Be, be ready, man. So you raise your hand, I'm going to call you forward, and you're going to get prayed for, all right? And then we're going to do communion. So right now, if you're in here and you need God to move, maybe you're sick, you need healing, maybe it's a loved one that's away, maybe, whatever it is, you fill in the blanks, but our God meets our needs. So on the count of three, I want you to run to the front. One, two, three, come on. Line up right here. I need my prayer team. Staff members and deacons, please come to the front. <coughs> Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's room on the side over here, or make room in the middle for Miss Charlotte. We got to make room for Miss Charlotte. There's always room for Miss Charlotte. She's the the Jello of Dallas First Assembly. <laughs> you for laughing. All right, here we go, guys. Listen to me. We are one body. We're one community. In just a minute, we're going to take communion when this is done. And part of that symbolizes what Jesus did for us, but it foreshadows our together, together, many nations in the presence of God in eternity. So right now, I want you to stretch out your hands and start to pray. And I need those that are here to lay hands on people to get ready to do it. All right, you guys ready? Start praying right now. Oh 
Matthew, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would heal his body. Church, agree with me. I pray that you would heal his body in the name of Jesus. I pray that you restore him, God, that this would never happen again. Lord, I pray for, for those that are sick in this house. I pray against, God, I pray for Bob in the name of Jesus. I pray that cancer would flee from him in Jesus' name. I pray that you would heal his body in the name of Jesus. I pray against depression. God, I pray that the darkness would flee in the name of Jesus. God, I pray against anxiety. God, I pray that anxiety would flee in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for those that are looking for breakthroughs. God, I pray that you would create the breakthrough. God, I pray that we would thirst for you, God, that you would satisfy, Lord, because only you can do that. Only you are the satisfaction. God, I pray for, for loved ones that are away from you, that you would bring them home in the name of Jesus. God, bring the prodigal home. Lord God, I pray for the addicts. You still set addicts free, and we claim freedom for the addict in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says, for he who is the Son is set free is free indeed. And, and we claim that in the name of Jesus. We claim that in the name of Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. So we're going to we're going to take communion. So if you, if you didn't, didn't get a chance to grab the elements, they're in the very back table. Why am I interrupting to go to communion? Because this is critical. Right? This is a central part of our worship. You guys can, can have a seat for a moment. We're going to do one more worship song after this. But, if, but this is a central part of our worship. Because we're remembering the one that set us free when we do this. But I want to focus on something else today. Not only do we remember the one that set us free, we're also remembering this. We're, we're remembering this foreshadows our future. Our future is this. I want you, when I was in the worshiping the, during the first service, I had this vision. I had this, this, these thoughts in my head that, that one day all of creation, one day all of the redeemed will stand before God and they will sing praises to him. That we, we as one people will be together. And I want you to imagine what I saw and imagine the reality of, the, of heaven to come is you have cultures, uh, every culture that has been redeemed. You have people from all over the world, from all different times, all different ways of doing things, standing together as brothers and sisters because we are the redeemed. We are his children and we are paid for by the blood of the Lamb. Today when we take our communion, we recognize this. It is he that sets us free. It is he that heals the nations. It is he that has an eternity picked out for us. So let's take communion. I'm going to read the scripture. In the book of Mark it says, As they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. 
he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. This is what we celebrate. This is what we celebrate. So church, let's thank him for the goodness in our life. If you have unforgiven sin, if there's sin in your life you need to confess, give it to him right now. Let's confess it. And then we'll, they will take, we'll take the elements. Lord, I pray that you would make us clean. I pray that you would forgive us of, unf- of, of all things that are dirty, all things that are wrong. I pray that you would wash us clean today. Lord, thank you for the bo- your body that was broken for us. Let's take and eat the bread that symbolizes that body. The fruit of the vine symbolizes his body that was broken and crushed for us. He paid the penalty for my sin. He paid the penalty for your sin. Not only are we rescued from a a, a nasty eternity, but we are redeemed. We are redeemed to be together with him forever. Take and drink. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for what you did for us. Let's stand for the last song.
Revelations 5:11 says, Then I looked, and I heard around the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders, and the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. God, worthy is your name. You are a holy Father. Thank you that you are here with us. Thank you that we don't have to be apart from you, God. Thank you for your sacrifice. God, I pray that you would be with us the rest of this service, that your presence would guide us, that you would bless Pastor Rob and his family and prepare him as he shares the word and prepare our hearts for what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You guys can have a seat. Isn't it powerful when God does things in a church service? You know, I get excited on Sunday mornings because, because we come together to, to honor the creator of the universe. Isn't it wild that, that the, the author of creativity is in, is, is in our midst right now? Anything could happen. I think it's, I think it's a beautiful thing. I, I, I need to confess to you, my daughter is sick. My, my, my wife is supposed to do prayer and communion, and she's home with McKenna, Isla, Isla, get the littlest one. Her name's Isla, right? <laughs> I have so many. They just, she's, uh, she's had a fever for a couple of days, and so I didn't pray for her. So can we pray for Isla? God, I thank you for my sweet Isla. I pray that you would heal her. Lord, I pray that her fever would break and that all things that are wrong, that they would, that they would flee from her presence because you're in her. I pray that you, would, that you would keep the rest of the family healthy. And I pray for all others in this house that are dealing with sickness. I pray that you would make it right, that you would bring healing in Jesus' name. Amen. So today is the final Sunday in our series called Afterlife. And, and, and this, is, this is what it all boils down to. It, it, today is the day that it all boils down to. Everything that we've talked about from, from, from the very beginning of, of hell and the defeat of hell and, and heaven and, and, and all these things, and it comes down to this moment. It comes down to this, this, this part of the story. And, and, it, and it boils down to one point, and then we'll all just leave after I say it. I'm just kidding. We're not going to leave. You're my hostages. But I will say this. If you, if you were to surmise this entire story, and, and you'll see in the scripture I'm about to read, that God desperately wants to never to be away from you again. Now, if I may say that differently, God forever wants to be with you. And, and think of the heartache of God. Think of, think of when he made man, when he made Adam, he made him for a reason. And, and Adam's, Adam's purpose was to, was to walk with God. He was carefully constructed to, to walk with God and participate in God's plan for the earth. And, and a, Adam sins and he gets expelled from the garden. And in that expulsion, he, we, the human experience that you and I understand, it begins. You know, from joy to sadness to grief to excitement, the whole myriad of emotions. And, and humanity begins to, to push and happen, but, but it wasn't part of the plan. I mean, grief was not part of the plan. Sadness was not part of the plan. Death was never part of the plan. And in the midst of that, God, had a, God said, I have a, a plan. He, he promises to Eve that your offspring, Jesus, will pay the price so that we don't have to be separate again. 
And, and, and in that season, humans do what humans do and think of the calamity that's happened. Think of the genocide. Think of the sickness. Think of, think of the thievery all alongside with the good things that have happened. There's this myriad of the human experience and all the while God is ever present. But God, but God promises something better in the end. We know 2,000 years ago that, that Christ was born and he, he walked the earth. At the age of 30, he began his ministry. And for three years, he, he healed and he, he preached about the coming kingdom of God. And he, he, he brought hope. And, and it was God in the flesh. It was Jesus who was among us. And then at the end of the 33 years, he gets, he gets falsely accused. He gets hung on a tree. He's crucified and he dies. And his followers felt like that it was all over. They never listened when he said that I will be, I will die, but in three days I will rise. On the third day he rises and, and death is defeated. And we celebrated that a few weeks ago talking about the story of, of, of how he defeated hell. And, and then he, he ascends to heaven. But it's not the end of the story. We're still in the midst of this experience. But there's this promise that's forever made that he's going to come back. How many of you guys are ready for him to come back? Hey, man, are you excited about this? You know, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to tell you the truth is, is the church in, in, in the Western world, we, 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 we bite our nails worried about the Antichrist. We bite our nails worried about seven years when, when the reality is there's an eternity that God has planned is beyond our imagination. And, and, we talk, and, then, and then we talked last week about the millennial reign of Christ and, and the judgment that's coming and how Satan is, is bound and put into the lake of fire never to, to tempt the nations again. But there's something greater that's about to happen. There is, there is something that, is about, that we're going to read about today that forever changes everything. Have you ever asked the question, God, where are you? Have you? Anybody ever asked that question before? How many of you guys have asked that question in the last month? I'm not going to hate you for that. I mean, it's this reality, right? Because we understand that according to what Paul teaches, that, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and Jesus promises, he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you, even to the end of the age. I mean, that's a commitment made to him. But there's times that, that God doesn't always feel as tangible as he did 10 minutes ago. And, and wouldn't it be wild if, 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 if we always had those moments where we felt like God was something, that he, that he was something that we could touch, something that was tangible. Well, the reality is one day is going to be that. So if I were to surmise, if I were to bring it all to one, one point, to one head about, about what God's final plan is in, in, in Scripture, it is this, is that he will be with us forever. That we will never be without him that he will be our healer, that he will be our rescuer, that he will be the one that comforts us, that he will forever be there. And today we're going to read about that. So why don't you guys follow with me in Revelation chapter 20. So I, I love this scripture. I, I love this scripture. This is something to get excited about. And I hope that you like scripture because today we're reading a lot of it. Okay? A lot, like two chapters. Yeah, but it's good. This is good stuff. And, and th these are the things that are to come. God has plans that are bigger. I'm going to pause for a second before I read. I'm hearing from the Lord, and I'm not just saying that lightly. Is there someone in here you need to be rescued. There was someone in this building right now that you need to be set free. And you feel the struggle. You feel the pull. And, and you're not sure what voice to listen to. Well, right now, if the voices that are telling you that, that you're not good enough and that God doesn't love you, that's not the Lord speaking. So if that's you, I want you to do this. I want you to, to rebuke that voice and you take authority over it and you say, leave me in Jesus' name. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to flood you. If there's sin in your life, I want you to confess it to the Lord so that you're clean. All right, can we pray? 
Guys, I, I can't preach this sermon until we get past this. God, I pray for freedom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray that, that the evil will leave, that the darkness will leave, that you, would, that you would chase it away in Jesus' name. I pray that the voices would stop. I pray that you would rescue him in Jesus' name. I pray for freedom, God. I pray for freedom. If that's you right now, I want you to proclaim your freedom. I want you to thank God for your freedom. All right? Thank God for your freedom. Praise you, Jesus. The pain and the suffering that we have in this life, it's not God's future. That was never God's plan for this earth. The, the things that you and I learn about in school, I mean, I remember the, two years ago, a year ago, I went to Auschwitz and touring Auschwitz and seeing where so much horror had happened and seeing the piles of human hair and, and the evils, the, the evil that man could do to man. That was never God's plan. It was all part of the fall. And, and you and I are in this time where, where, where we're still waiting for God to make, to finish the work, to finish it. But listen to me, church, it's going to get finished. So Revelation chapter 20, it says this. It says these words. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was gone also. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I want you to think about something. I want you to, to think about where is God right now? Where is God the Father right now? Is, is he, he's, he's, in, he's in his throne room. He's, he's in heaven, right? And, and we understand that we are not in heaven, that, but we know he said it's the Holy Spirit. We know that Jesus came and walked the earth. We know that there's, there, there, there's a here and not yet aspect to this, but, 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 for, but right now earth and heaven are separate. But that's not God's plan. God does not want earth and heaven to be separate. All right, so what does he do? He says, I'm making it all new. I'm wiping it clean. The heaven that we know of right now, whoo, it's gone. The earth that you know of right now, whoo, it's gone. Because I'm doing something new. All right, because, because what I had, what I had created and made good was ruined, and now we're going to make it good again. And the goodness is going to be heaven and earth together. How many of you guys are excited about that? Heaven coming down to earth. Right? I mean, th I mean think of the problems that are going to be solved in this. And it says this in verse 3, And I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. Come on, somebody. All right? Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eye, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. I mean, think about this. The, the things that you and I recognize as part of the human condition, they're wiped clean. They are removed. They are, do not exist in the new heaven and new earth. And, and, and what I love about that is God doesn't wipe away our memory. He comes down and wipes away our tears. God himself comforts his people. God, where are you? I'm coming. I'm coming to make this right. I mean, how many of you have stood in life and you said, God, why did that happen? How could you let these things happen? Here is God saying, now it's time. Now I'm making it right. Now I'm righting the wrongs. There will be no more death. There will be no more anxiety. There will be no more fear. There will be no more depression. There will be no more wickedness on this earth. It will be gone. And I will be with my people. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. How many of you guys know when God says, trust me, you better listen? Right? To write this down, for what I say, tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of water of life. And all who, who are victorious.
All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Church, the last time in Scripture that Jesus said, it is finished, it was the cross. He's hanging from the cross. He's about to give up the ghost, and he says, it is finished. And when he said these words, it meant this. It meant the atonement for our sins is gone. It meant that now we can live in the presence of God. Now the Holy Spirit can make our home. But there's a second phase to this. There's a second time that he says it is finished. It is from the throne room of heaven. It's when heaven and earth are brought together again. He says it is finished. My, the detour that humans have been on since the garden, it is gone. We were back on track. My plan is happening. There is no more death. It's gone. For those of you that go to sleep at night with your heart racing over fear, that thing, those thoughts, those circumstances that drive you crazy, it is finished. The be- he says, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But cowards, any cowards in the building? What, are you too afraid to answer? (laughs) Isn't it funny that God lists cowardice? That bothers me. I think about the times that I was too afraid to jump. I think of the opportunities that I miss be out of fear. We do that, don't we? Right? It says, it says this, it says, but cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and liars, their fate is the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. The one of the the one, then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the, the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come with me. I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain. And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper as clear as crystal. The city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had 12 foundation stones, and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who, t- who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. When he measured it, he found it was a square as wide as it is long. In fact, the length and the width and the height were each 1,400 miles. Can you, can you grasp that? Some of you are like, well, I just did the math, and he's in outer space, right? Anybody ever figure that out? He makes the world new. We, we don't even know the scale of the earth at this point. Right? There's room. There's, there's room in his, in his city. And then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick, according to the human standard used by the angel. The wall was made of jasper, and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones and laid with 12 precious stones. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase. Someone say that, please. What he said. The eleventh jacinth and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, and the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. Church, this is 
he's given this description of the, of, of the city of heaven. And it's not, it's not the heaven that was, it's the heaven to come. And I think what's wild about it is he's showing this to John, and John is, is seeing in a vision, or, or he's there, I don't, he doesn't even know, but, but it's things to come. Here is God who is carefully making a place for his people. And you look at the description, there is, it's massive. There's 14,000 miles this way, 14,000 miles that way. There is, it, it, there, it, it is a massive, massive city. And, and, and this city is, 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 is where his people live. You have foundation stones named for the 12 apostles. You have angels that are on parapet walls guarding the city. But what's wild about that is there's 12 gates to come into this city. And here's my favorite part. This is what I can't, do you want to hear what I can't get my head around? That I love? Each gate is a single pearl. All right? That means it's a pearl that, they, that was hollowed out so that you have a pathway to go through it. I want to see that oyster. If you have a pearl so big that you go walk through the pearl, I want to see that oyster. In fact, I'm not going to lie to you. I want to eat that oyster. <laughs> Fried, raw, I don't care. I, smoked, steamed. Give me that oyster. Get in my belly. That's what I want. I will spend a thousand years trying to eat that sucker. That, that, that's what I think about. But I think about this is a marvelous city. But, but more than that, more than that, that weird humor of Pastor Rob is this. Is there something that's so significant about that? And I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to give me an honest answer. How many of you have seen gold so pure that you could see through it? That it was like, like a looking glass. I mean, anyone ever seen gold that was so well refined that it was a, a purity level so high that you can see through it like glass? John did, right? This is the level of riches that are in heaven. But what's wild, what's interesting to me about, about this, this level of wealth and riches, it's not gilding the fence. It's not covering the walls. It's, it's none of those things. It's the pavement, right? I mean, literally, people are walking on gold so pure that you can see through that gold and that, that level of wealth is beyond my mind, but it's not about the wealth. It's about God turning things on its head. It's about the things that have motivated this earth for the last several thousand years are no longer motivations. Right? It's about the world that is upside down. It's about God fixing the wrong, is righting the wrong, is this, is the thing that makes the world move. It's money. Am I, would you agree with me on that? Money makes the world go round? Anybody agree? It's not a trick question. Like, it really is. Why do you go to work in the morning? Is it because you love wearing a tie and going to the office? Some of you are like, yeah. I think, never mind how I feel about ties. People are hungry. They need to eat. You have to buy to eat. And, and money is not necessarily wrong, but Jesus, he says this to us. He says, money the love of money is the root of all evil. And it's such a significant statement when you consider this. It's, it's the fact that people will do anything for money. Some people, they will lie. They will cheat. They will murder. They will commit genocide. They will, they will overtake another nation. They're, if your value base is based on your money, guess what? Your, your value base is wrong. And this floods into the church. It floods into the church world because we, we do this in Western culture, in Western Christianity. We look at, we, we categorize the blessings of God in terms of dollar signs sometimes. Am I right on that? I mean, you may not. I mean, you guys are very well, you're a very savvy church, but, but this happens all the time. I mean, I've never, you see this a lot, and I've never seen it the other way around, but you'll see a really nice car with a big bumper sticker or, or lettering etched into the glass of the rear window. It says blessed, right? You have a nice car. It says blessed. But you ever seen like a hoopty, you know, that has rusty, built in the 70s, it's all rusting out with blessed on the back of it? You're not going to see that, are you? Because we don't equate that to blessings. We, we, we have the tendency to look at the favor of God in terms of, uh, of dollar signs. And here is God saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. What you look at as my favor, we walk on. All right, in heaven, our feet touch this. Let's take this into another, another way of thinking. It's not just like you have gilded slippers. It's something more significant than that. Let's look at this as though we're, we're from the Middle East. 
American culture, we don't see it quite the same way, but especially in first century A.D. Middle East, you, whatever you put your foot on, it was an insult. It's an insult to show your feet. So you put your feet up on a coffee table and other people see the soles of your feet. It's an insult. It is a filthy, filthy insult. In fact, this, this plays into current events. 30 years ago, after we invaded Iraq the first time, and we withdrew from that uh, during the first Kuwait War, the first middle, the Gulf War, and the, the Gulf War I, Saddam Hussein was very angry at the United States. So he had a bunch of murals made on the ground of George H.W. Bush's, uh, George H. Bush? H.W. Bush. They had his face muraled on the ground. They, they sold welcome mats that had George Bush's face on it. Why? Because Iraqis would have to walk on the face of his enemy to insult his enemy. To us, it doesn't mean anything. But if you're in the Middle East, it is a complete insult. And here is God saying that that thing that people will kill for, that thing that you think you are blessed because you have, that thing, your feet tread upon it because it's not worth anything in the hereafter. That should mean something to us if we struggle. Is it, is it our God who supplies all our needs? That, is that we shouldn't make money our idol because that's just pavement. We, he treads on it. They tread on this because God's got something greater. God's got something greater for us. Then it says this. It says, let me find myself. Verse 22 says, I saw no temple in the city for the Lord Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. There's no walls containing God. How many of you guys know you can't, you can't contain God? Am I right about that? How many of you guys have tried to put God in a box? Anybody ever done that? What does he do? He finds a way, he finds a way to make your box bigger, and then, and then you get a bigger box, and then you get a bigger, bigger box, and eventually there's no lid on the box, and one day there's no more box because he overtakes, because you cannot contain God. And here, here you have it. It is no longer a building than where we come to worship. He is the temple. There is no separation. There is no brick and mortar keeping you from God. He is right there. And it says, And the city had no need for the sun or moon. For the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk in its lights, and the kings of the world will, will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day because there is no need there. And the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry or dis and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In this city, you have, you have, you, you have the kings of the earth who come. That means there's people, Right? There's nations. You have leaders of nations who come with the best their nation has to offer. And they come into the presence of God and they give it, they lay it at his feet because all the glory and all the honor, they belong to him. So if you're taking notes, you, I want you to take these notes. These are the takeaways for today. So pull out your paper, use your, use your phone, whatever you're going to use. Just get ready for this. The first thing is this, is God is never away from us. Now we understand that now because that's the commitment of Christ. He told us that I'll never leave you or forsake you even to the end of the age. And he, so we understand that, that yes, he's with us, the Holy Spirit lives in us, but this is a mere foreshadowing of things to come. When we took communion, not only do we remember the penalty and the price that Jesus paid on our behalf, but we're also foreshadowing the fact that we will, we will dine with him in, in the kingdom. We will eat with him in New Jerusalem, that, that he will never be away from us. You who are lonely, you will never be alone again. God is never away from us. This is the plan. Right now, heaven and earth are in separate they're separate. They don't touch other than the Holy Spirit living in us. And we're ambassadors, right? Where citizenship is in heaven. But heaven isn't here. It's there. But God's plan is to knit heaven and earth together so that heaven and earth are never separate again. Number two is this. There's no more hurt. Come on. Anybody excited about that? Yeah. 
In, in the words of my daughter, McKenna, no more boo-boos. All right? Quick, I need a Band-Aid. I'm bleeding. Where? I can't see the blood. You know, she, she'll Band-Aid up. I can't find Band-Aids in my house because if she finds them, like, like a fat kid looking for cake, and she'll cover herself in Band-Aids, you know? But this is, this is my daughter, McKenna. She's crazy about this. That's a terrible expression. I feel bad about that. I was that fat kitty looking for a cake. <laughs> I'll own that, okay? I will totally own that. But, but here's the reality is there's no more hurt. So, so that, that, means, that, mean, that means that not only is there no more hurt, is that he's the one that wipes away the tears. So, so he doesn't just say, okay, whew, you forgot. I hate that idea. He, he goes to you individually. And he says, I will wipe away your tear." He says, you can cry on my shoulders. I'm going to make it right. He fixes it. He cares that much about you that it's not, it's not rub some dirt in it, like Pastor Rob would say. It's, 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 let me wipe away your tear. And the things that cause the hurt, the sin that's in this life, the, the, the evilness, those, those people, right? The, let's be honest. He, twice he listed a group of people that don't make it to heaven, right? They're the, the idolaters. They're, the, they're those that are manipulators, those that practice witchcraft. These are evil people who cause the pain. They're not there anymore, right? Satan is locked. Satan is, is, is in forever torment. He's no longer tempted the nations. The cause is finished. The cause that causes the hurt is removed from the situation. And now he wipes away your every tear. There's no more pain. There's no more death. There's no more sorrow. There's no more anxiety, people. There's no more depression. It's gone. Praise the Lord. All right, the next thing is this. All things are made new. He renews all things. In fact, Jesus calls it this in the Gospels, the renewal of all things. This is what he's talking about. This earth will be made new again, the good earth that he made. How do I know it's a good earth? Because he made it and he said, it was good. Right? He declared it good. He loves this earth. He will make it new again. All these things will be made fresh once again. They're all made new. All right? The next thing is this. It is finished. This time of human experience will never be again. The pain will be gone. The genocide will be gone. The crooked politicians will be gone. Why aren't you clapping over that one? <laughs> World leaders that try and manipulate economies and countries and hurt people, guess what? You're gone. Right? right? So this time is, is over. It's done. And the plan begins. Look at it this way. Is God had a plan for humanity when he, when he made Adam. We never got to see that plan because Adam sinned. We were on a detour from his plan. We on-ramped that day. This is the day that we on ramp back. We, we're no longer on the detour. We're back to what he wants to do. We're back to his original plan. And why don't you ask me what it is? I'd like to tell you. I have no idea, but I would like to tell you. All right? But I can't wait to participate in it. I can't wait to be part of what he's got to do. Because his plans for us are good. I mean, he, he made the earth just by speaking. If he can do that, what else can he do? Think of what he's done in your life right now and our brokenness. What can he do when we're whole? I mean, oh my goodness, it's powerful. The goodness of God is, is, is unimaginable. So the next thing is this. Jesus is the light. And I love this because... Because he, he shines. Like what we experienced here during the worship time and the prayer time, you experience the light of the Lord. You see in, in, in John, the book of John, he talks about Jesus being the light. He is the light of this earth. But guess what? That light is, is contained within us, is, is followers. But, but you know what's going to happen? It's, it's going to be let loose. All right? There'll be no need for the sun. There'll be no need for the moon. It will be the light of Jesus that illuminates the earth. You don't have to change light bulbs anymore. I get put out by little things. Revelation 22, it says this. Then the angel showed me a river. We read this last Sunday. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, following the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, with a fresh crop each month. 
The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. I want you to pause right there. Is there are still nations, and they are being healed by him. Think, think, of, think of all that's happened in the last couple thousand years. Nations are being healed. Think, think of the, the tension in our nation that, that rears its head <coughs> over ra- racial issues in our country. The word nation here is not talking about na- nation states. It's talking about people groups. All right? Wounds of the past are going to be healed by God. Amen? How many of you guys think that's a good thing? Right? What man has done to man will be healed by God. No longer will there be a curse upon anything. For the throne of God and the Lamb will be there. And his servants will worship him. And they will see his face and his name will be written on their foreheads. And there will be no night there. No need for lamps or sun. For the Lord God will shine on them. And they will reign forever and ever. That's you. The Lord shining on you. You will reign with him forever and ever, church. Then the angel said to me, Everything you had heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God who inspires his prophets has sent his angel to tell his servants what will happen soon. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in the book. How many of you guys are excited about his coming soon? This, this is what we're talking about. This, this is a beautiful thing. When, when the rest of the world worries about a, a seven-year tribulation, here is Jesus saying, I got big plans. And you're going to forget about all that other stuff that you're afraid of. My plans are greater than that. I got four more takeaways, then we're going to pray. All right? So get ready for this. Number one, the nations are healed. We just read about how the tree is going to heal the nations. That means they still exist. That means that, 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 that animosity between people groups man, we're going to be brothers. We're finally going to be brothers. Not just in word, but in, in, in true action. God's going to make things right. God's going to heal the nations. It, politicians have tried for years, haven't they? Has it helped? Eh. He fixes this, and I can't wait. Number, the, next, the next takeaway is this. The curse is broken. All right, so we understand, yes, that the curse of sin is broken. It's gone. The tempter is gone. Um, they, they're, they're, all these things are, are, the nastiness is gone. In it. But in addition to that, there's something else. There's been a curse on this land since Adam fell. That is broken. That is made right in this season at the renewal of all things. The curse is broken. Number three is this. Darkness never falls. And, I, and I, I, this speaks powerfully to me in, this, in two ways. Number one. Is a very physical, literal sense. His nighttime never comes because this, he is the light of the earth. He is the light of the world. But in addition to that, pause. Let me back up for a second. So we've seen a rise in Luciferianism in, in, the, in our Western world in the last couple of years. Have you noticed that? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Lucifer is another name for Satan. Lucifer means the, the bringer of light. All right, the light that he brings is a false light. He's the author of lies. So we've had a rise of Satanism in our country under the guise of Luciferianism where they, where they believe in the bringer of light. It's the false light. He mimics what Jesus does in a very evil, dark, sinister way. But yet the true light will come. The true light will come. So here, here's what it means in another sense. Is the darkness never falls. For those of you that are dealing with anxiety... For those of you that are dealing with depression, those of you that you know what it's like late at night when you're trying to fall, fall asleep and regret comes into your mind. You know what it's like when the hurt pours itself. You know what that's like when the shadow comes. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Guess what? The shadows never come. Because darkness never falls. And the final thing is this, church. Jesus... It's coming soon. This is the commitment that he made for us 2,000 years ago. But here's what's different. I know, I know some of you are saying, well, Pastor Rob, every time something happens in the news, there's always a preacher saying Jesus is coming soon. I'm not going to base this on the news for a minute. All right? I'm going to base it on the writings of the church fathers and, and what the early church wrote about 
they, they looked at the numbers. They theorized. They felt like the Holy Spirit told them 2,000 years ago, first century church, first generation church, they, they believed that somewhere in the mid-2000s to the mid-21, somewhere between now and 100 years from now would be the time that Jesus would come back. They theorized that it was going to be in this season. This was a common belief. And, and I look at the world around us, and I see that, that the pieces are being moved into place. Church, listen to me. Is he is coming soon. Whether it's in our generation or our grandkids' generation, we are near. We are close to this. And the thing that God's going to do is going to make all things right. But here's why I, I want to close with this idea. As we just talked about how great heaven is, all the things that God has planned for you and your future, that all the promises of God, but you know something? That God still moves in people's lives today. And when he moves in your life today, it's a foreshadow of the good things to come. Some of you have come here sick and we prayed for you. Some of you have come in here and, and needing, needing God to bless you. Let me tell you something. His blessings are a foreshadow of, of the kingdom of heaven coming. So what I want to do is we pray to close. I want to, be, I want to do this. I want to pray that God's blessings are on you. I want to pray that God showers you with his goodness. That some of you, you've, been, you've had struggles for a long time. I want to pray that God gives you victory over those struggles. Because you, you are called to be more than a conqueror. I want to pray that, that God answers the prayers, that, that healing comes, that, 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 that God brings dreams. In fact, this is what God told me to pray in the first service, and I think it holds true for the second. And the question is this, how many of you want to dream again? How, you know what I'm trying to say? It's prophecy in the Old Testament that the, the young men will have vision and the old men will have dreams. And I think it's significant about that is that, is that as we age, we, we face lots of disappointment and we forget to dream. But yet God speaks to the dream. God uses the dream to propel his will. They propel his blessings. How many of you want to dream again? So God, I pray, I pray, God, that, that we would not look back, that we would look forward to the good things that you have. God, I pray that we would once again dream. I pray that, that you would bless your house, that you would bless your saints, that you would bless your people, that, that your goodness would be real in their life and you would foreshadow the good things that you have for them, the things that are going to come. I pray for those that are struggling financially. How many of you guys need, need a financial blessing? Raise your hand. You need God to move financially. God, I pray for those that raise their hand. I pray in the name of Jesus that you give them wisdom, that you create opportunity, that you would surprise them, God. And I pray that you would challenge them in their faithfulness because you are forever faithful. How many of you guys need healing? Raise your hand if you need healing. God, I pray for those hands that are raised for healing. I pray that you would bring healing. Lord, your word says that by your stripes we're healed. And I pray that your blessing of healing would come, that you would heal Bob of his cancer, that all other sicknesses that are represented in this house, they would flee in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for those that are dealing with addiction, that they would, be, they would be set free. God, I pray for your blessings in this church. In the name of Jesus, amen. Guys, I love you, and I just want to share something with you is... It is, he's about to close. He's on the guitar, so he's gonna, it's going to be really cool. I don't know how he's going to do this, but I can't wait to watch him. Change from the guitar to closing, and he's so slick. A couple of weeks ago, we took up an offering. We gave you a three-week warning. We told you that we were raising funds to help replenish some of the costs that we had spent this year on repairing of the parking lot, at least with the plumbing issue that went, that went, went there. And, and I want to tell you something, that you guys responded. So I want to give you the numbers that came in for, for what you all did that day. And some of you guys were very direct in how it was going, and some of you just gave large amounts without any instruction. But we knew it was for that. And we, we compared it with other years giving for the same week. And our, and our calculations, in fact, before I tell you the number, I want to tell you this, that I want to, I'm proud of you as your pastor. And the thing that, that stands out to me the most, and I did, I did not look at who gave, unless you told me what you gave, I don't know what you gave. And Michelle holds me to that. There's integrity there, because I want to pastor you no matter where you're at in those situations, because you're not a dollar sign to me. You're my family. All right? But, but I, I will say this, that it was reported to me that there are people that don't give, they gave. Good, 
like large amounts. And here's what's significant about that. That meant that if that was you, that you were beginning the journey of trusting God with your finances. For some of you, you, you jumped off that cliff and you began to trust God with your finances. And, and I, I, and I want to pray a blessing over you in just a second, so, but I want to tell you the numbers. We brought in somewhere in the neighborhood of $14,000. All right? It's about what it costs, give or take, to do that job so far. And I want to tell you the significance of this. It's not that the church is going to sink. But some of you walked away saying, we're in financial trouble. Here's what's been happening. We have two factors. The economy has hit our church the way it's hit a lot of your lives. We also have a lot of new people in the church that have not come, that, that are learning to give. So that's going to be a factor. We, we still have some cushion. But I believe that 2024, God's going to bless you and bless this church. But I think it's going to be a hard season economically. I don't think we're out of the woods with what's happening globally with the economy. And we want to position our church by replenishing some that was used for repairs so that we can be ready for what challenges may come next year. Amen? That's wise, isn't it? We're trying to be good stewards of the season of the time. So as he comes up to close, I'm just going to pray for those that, good Lord, I pray for those that, that, that you challenge to give. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that they would see your hand directly in their life, that you would prosper them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give it up for my friend. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I hope all you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I had an awesome holiday um, weekend. It was long. I love it because I have to go to work. <laughs> so, um, but I want to say I am thankful because I haven't heard this ever at any other church. A pastor who goes in depth on revelations and in depth on the things to come right after... Um, you know, he has a lot of great sermon series. This is one of, this kind of thing is one of my favorites. And so for that, I'm really thankful. I don't hear this a lot. So, um, but yeah, let me hop onto these announcements really quick so we can all get out of here and go eat. If y'all still have room for food, I don't. <laughs> so visitors, um, welcome. Uh, we're glad you're here. If you look in the seat in front of you, there's a connect card. If you guys could fill that out, um, turn it in to the person in the back we have a gift for you um, thank you for being here um, like Pastor Rob said we had that special offering a few weeks ago um, and giving is giving is really really important it's something that God calls us to do um, it's the one thing that God really calls us to test him in um, with our finances um, and I have seen that in my own life um, the last few months were rough but God has definitely blessed me as I trusted him with what he's given me. Um, so yeah, make sure to give. Um, give from your heart. Give what he calls you to give. And we have a few ways. Um, we have the table in the back. Um, and then we also have online or through the app. I use the app. It's really, really easy and really quick. Um, that's my favorite way to give. Or you guys could give it through snail mail. Um, it takes a really long time, but you know, you get out there. Give it to our address, 64 Holder Road, Dallas, Georgia. Um, and, yeah, we have on December 3rd, it's our last Community Sunday of the year. These have been really, really awesome, and I love Community Sundays. Um, one thing, it is only one service at 1030. Uh, so if you come at 9, it'll just be me and Chris and the worship team. So <laughs> you guys will get to watch us practice. <laughs> But we have one service on December 30th, it's our community Sunday, so make sure you invite a lot of people. Um, we have cards in the back that have the dates on it. You could give them to your friends, give them to people at work. Um, yeah, we'll be doing, we'll have Kona ice, uh, we'll have hot chocolate and cookie decorating. Uh, we'll have the Grinch here. I like the Grinch better than Santa Claus. Anyone else with me? We got a few people, yeah. Um, and then on Friday, December 8th, we are having the women's Christmas party in the Fellowship Hall. It's the building right over there. Um, and it'll be at 6.30. And if you have any questions, speak with Linnea or Miss Jessica. I'm not sure if she's here today. If you have questions today, talk to Linnea. Um, and with that, I'm going to pray us out um, and dismiss us. Jesus, I thank you for I thank you for the season where we can just look back and be thankful for what you provided for us, Lord, and what you've given to us and how you bless us, Lord. And I pray that we'll be able to bless others with what you've given us. I pray that as we go, you
you would just watch over us and that we'd be safe, Lord God, that your blessing would follow us through the week and that we'd just seek you with everything we have and that we'd spread your love and your joy to others, Lord. And I pray that people would invite people to our community Sunday. That's going to be really, really awesome. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You guys are all dismissed.